Good evening, child of God. This is yours, Prophetess Elizabeth. I'm coming to teach you on why you should not, not be complacent, why you should never be complacent as a child of God. It affects your faith, it affects your spiritual life, it affects your growth, it affects your relationships, it makes you to lose opportunities if you are complacent. So this is not a topic uh, just from the blues. This is a topic with biblical scriptures that justify why you should never allow yourself to be complacent as a child of God. So today I want to talk about two points. One of which is complacence will make you to be in isolation. If you are not careful, you could be find yourself being isolated. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, 10, 24, 25, it says, and let us consider how to steer up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What day is it talking about? It's talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's talking about the end. So it is now that you have the chance, now that you have the opportunity to be able to create those relationships so that you don't find yourself in isolation. Isolation from a faith community can lead to spiritual dryness and vulnerability. Remember, the devil is preying on those people that are isolated, those people that have got no encouragers, those people that are by themselves. This is, you make yourself a target of the devil if you are allow yourself to be isolated as a child of God. Hallelujah. You know, when you are connected with others, when you have a support system, there is encouragement, there is also accountability. So you are not just by yourself. You know, there are people to support you when you feel weak, when you feel vulnerable, when you feel tired, when you feel discouraged. You always have that person who will always encourage you. So it's so important as a child of God that you don't find yourself being in isolation, being isolated from other believers. You should always make sure that you have a fellowship that you are attending. You have people that are praying for you. You have people that are backing you up. You know, we know the story of Moses. Moses, when he was, you know, getting tired, you know, in that battle, lifting up his hands on that mountain. He needed other people who helped him to hold his hands up so that they could get the victory. Hallelujah. So for you also as a child of God to get your victory, you need your support system. You need your sisters. You need your brothers to stand in prayer with you. Hallelujah. You need them. You, you cannot do this thing alone. We need each other. So we don't want a child of God to be found in a place of isolation because of what? No man is an island. No man is an island. No matter how good you are, how powerful you think you are, there are days when you feel weak. There are days when you feel to be, you need somebody to encourage you. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5.11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So we are encouraged to keep building one another, to keep challenging one another. But if you get that complacent and you choose to be by yourself, you may truly, truly find yourself that your spiritual life will go down. You will miss opportunities. 
and then the enemy will attack you because then you are not strong on your own. This is why an army is better than one soldier because then they are stronger. Hallelujah. So that is the point that I'm trying to bring home to say, you know what, there are things you can do to avoid being in that uh, place of isolation. You can make sure that maybe you attend a fellowship, you have a church, you engage in community activities, some activities that you are not isolated. Seek accountability seek accountability even if you have your ministry online seek accountability we have a lot of people who are ministers with no accountability no 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 leader no mentor no nothing accountability is always good it's always good so i encourage you also take the opportunity to save others take opportunity to save others. Praise the Lord. And that way, you, the devil will not have an opportunity, you know, to keep you in a place of isolation. You all, Because you always have somebody to encourage you. Praise God. So I hope that point, you have picked some points on there that it's not good just for you to be by yourself and say, I'm okay by myself. You need other believers. You need other people who believe in what you believe, people who can encourage you. So the next point I want to talk about, because I want to make this really short, uh, is displeasure of God. Displeasure of God. If you become too complacent with the things of God, you, you find that you don't have interest in God. You don't have any you know, passion for the things of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in Revelation 3, 16, we know this scripture that God does not so become, you are, look, you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold. No, God does not want us to be in that state where you are neither hot nor cold. He wants you to be, you know, on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire for Jesus all the time, not to be complacent. God does not want us to be in that space. You know, Isaiah 29, 13, it says, and the Lord said, because these people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far away from me. Eh? They are far away from me and their fear of me is a con com commandment. It's a commandment taught by men. Yeah, 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 yeah. A commandment taught by men, my dear. You don't need to do things for the sake of doing it. We need to be really close to God. We need to be really attentive to the things of God. So this is why we cannot afford to be a complacent because, you know, we end up doing things. You may be doing things for the, for the wrong reasons. God wants us to do what we do because we want the glory to go to him. We want to save other people. We want to walk in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, it is a danger to be complacent because you may find yourself that, you know, you are one, you are isolated, two, your love of God is no more there at all. You have displeasure in the things of God. If people say, let's go to church, mm, I don't have time, I'm working. You would rather go to work than go to a fellowship. You would rather go to a party than go to a fellowship where you are going to be built up and that gift in you is going to be steered up. You don't want to go there. So my sister, I want to pray for you that God will open your heart, examine your heart, see if there are any hindrances, things that are, you know, causing you to be complacent with the things of God. I pray that God will activate your prayer life once again. He will give you the wisdom, the knowledge to love, to study the word diligently. He will, you know, he will help you to stay engaged. 
you know, to stay in a place where you can grow. Find a church, be rooted somewhere, be in a fellowship, you know, and be able to grow. Be able to grow. It's so important that we grow because remember, we are called to be witnesses. We are called to be the ambassadors, you know, of Jesus Christ. So I pray that these few words I have said will help you to change something, even if it is one small change you make in your life. God will get the glory. God will get the glory. So my final word for you is stop being complacent and be alert, be vigilant, be willing to do things for your Lord Jesus. Be willing to do things for your personal. Praise God. So if you like this video, if you like this teaching, uh, I want to ask you to like the video and also to follow me on my YouTube so that I can be able to continue to share the word of God with people like you. God bless you. I love you. Have a blessed day or evening wherever you are. Continue to shine.